Hi, this is Jacob L. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make steel armor gauntlets like this one. So before we can start, we'll need to get two pairs of leather gloves and the steel that you're going to use. So for the leather gloves, one of the pairs is one of these big, sloppy, cheap um, leather welding gloves. And the other pair is a closer fitting leather glove. Like kind of a leather work glove, but not a sloppy fitting one. You want it to fit your hand a lot closer. For the steel, um, I'll show you the picture, but I found this like appliance thing, just the door of it laying in the woods. But this isn't going to be enough for the whole thing, obviously. So, this sheet steel drawer, which I think this will be enough steel for the whole thing. It's quite a bit right here, you can see. And the thickness that we're looking for is about 16 gauge. It can be a little thinner than that. Um, so I'm not sure millimeters, I'll write it on the screen. You're going to need to get the plans and print them off and glue them onto some hard cardboard or some thin plywood or something to make the templates. So get all of your templates made and cut out. That's the first thing to do. Once you have that ready, we're gonna need the number one and number five pieces. These number one pieces form into the finger segments and the number five pieces are the fingertips. So, for doing one hand, one gauntlet at a time, we'll need five of these. Obviously I have four shown right here, but you'll need five of these, number five pieces, the fingertips and 38 of these number one pieces. But some of them are different. I'll show you a map of how they're different. So this is the finger segments map. It comes with the plans. Download. So this tells you how many of each kind you need. So basically, you don't have to cut them all out full size. Some of them, you can leave off one of the wings here, which these are the things that come down to protect the side of your finger. So some of them are full, both sides needed. Some of them, you just need one side, and some of them, you don't need any of the wings on the side. So the totals are 19 with both wings, eight with one, and 11 with no wings. The point of knowing this is so that you don't have to cut all of them out full size. You can save steel and save cutting time and not have to cut. The, what I mean by that, to clarify, so you can see, um, like on this finger, since this finger is out on the end, it has these going most of the way down. You can see these, it's this column here. This entire side has wings sticking out, but on this side, on the inside, see if I can get an angle where you can even see, it comes back to a certain point and behind here, there's still three more plates, but there's no more wings on the inside. And this is to allow um, the soft part on the inside of the finger to, to fit nicely so your fingers aren't pushing each other apart like that. Just lay the templates on the steel, start tracing them out. Just like that. I was able to get all the segments for one finger onto a couple of scraps here. So now I'm just gonna cut these out on the bandsaw. So here it is, the eight uh, pieces that are for the pointer finger armor. So the next phase, after you have cut out, is to, if the steel that you have has paint all over it, or some other crap, like mine does, then clean it off with a wire wheel. Otherwise, if it doesn't have that, then you can just clean up the edges, like on a grinding wheel, like this, and then come back on a wire wheel and round the edges so they're not sharp. Once you've got all the surfaces cleaned, for the next step is to bend the centers. So on each one, this one already has a bend in it, but that's not supposed to be there. That's just from how the metal was when I found it. Right at the center spike and in a straight line down, 
we're going to put a 90 degree bend. So since this one already is a bit wrinkled, I'm just gonna flatten it out by hammering it. That seems good enough. Now in the vise, we're gonna put this in right up to this center spike, up to there. That's gonna be our like our dividing line, a straight line, imaginary, down from the spike, straight back. And you're gonna have to just kind of eyeball this, or if you really want, you could draw in a line. But just eyeball it if you can, it'll be easier. Just try to get this straight up and down. And you're gonna to wanna to get as perfectly right up to the tip of this as po possible. We're just gonna bend it over. And make sure you pay attention to what way you bend it. So this is a one fin piece for the right hand, this finger, which means, basically, I'll get another one. This is the same piece. It goes on this finger and this fin bends down over the side. So with my finger like that, you can see it would go on there like that. This has to bend down that way. So we'll bend it down this way. If you get it backwards, then you can probably end up using it on a different finger. When you're hammering, try to get the hammer impact close to this edge so that it bends right on the edge and not, you know, out here somewhere. Then once it's over, you can just do a few straight down hits like that. All right, it looks good, so we'll pop it out of there. And you can see we got a nice, almost exactly 90 degree bend. So we have all of these bent over, including the fingertip piece, also bent 90 degrees at the center. The next step is to drill two holes at the rear of each piece. Um, the size that I'm using of drill bit is 9 64ths of an inch. I'll put on the screen the size in inches and millimeters. Um, and you can see just two holes at the back there. You want to leave a little bit of space from behind, a little bit of space from the center, and this is just going to be where we're going to uh, put a rivet through. It doesn't matter exactly how much space you leave, as long as it's about like that, it'll be fine, because it's just going to be riveting it to leather. and. There's no precision required as long as everything fits and lines up, including the front one. Also drill two holes on this front one. with all the holes drilled in these, and of course, grind off any sort of burr that you get from the drilling process. We now have to uh, start getting our leather strips ready. So with your extra glove, your big heavy one, we're gonna wanna cut off, in my case I'm just going up to this line, but you're gonna want at least probably four and a half or five inches of like wrist tube section of the glove back here. So I'm gonna cut five inches off. And this wrist tube section we're gonna use later for the wrist articulation. And this front part we're gonna be using to make leather strips or other parts of the glove that we're gonna need leather strips um, for linking all the pieces together. And set that aside. And on this, you're just gonna wanna go along and cut all the stitched seams So I'm just ripping this apart 
You might not even have to cut the seams, you can just rip them apart. So once you've gotten rid of any interior insulation layer and just taken all the stitching apart so you just have some pieces of actual leather here, we're just gonna need to cut strips that go from like the tip of your finger back to somewhere middle of the back of your hand. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is cut where the fingers are and just use the whole thing because we still have the rest of this that we can use for other parts. Taking just one of the fingers, um, we're going to start with this finger, just the main finger I guess, because that's what I cut the steel pieces for. Um, basically, we're just going to rivet all these onto the back of the leather. That's the short description of what's going to happen next. Before that, there's only one thing that we have to do, which is take the front piece, which can be, it can be any of the two wing pieces for the very front one plus this other fingertip piece, part number five. So part number one and part number five. Basically just gonna mate these together and weld them. To get these ready to weld together, first we have to take this, this piece and bend the wings down so that they point straight down. I'll show you what I mean. So you get this sort of house shape. We're also going to take this small one and bend these wings in, like bend them this way, so they're straight out, bend them like that, just go inside of the wings. You can see that with these side pieces bent in, um, they just, they'll fit right into each other. On this piece, you may have to end up doing some grinding to get it to be um, just a straight taper down like this because the wing might end up continuing out straight a little bit depending on exactly where you bend it. I didn't do any extra grinding on this one. I was able to just bend it and have it work. It also kind of depends how wide you make your fingertip piece. I tried to make mine fairly narrow because that will help the fingers fit closer together later on. Um, but obviously you can't make it too narrow. So we're just going to fit these together, I'm going to get out a welder and weld just a couple of spots like there, there, and then one spot up inside of here somewhere. If you don't want to weld it, you could also possibly solder it, or you could maybe drill a hole in the side and rivet it through there, but if you just rivet it, I'm not sure how you're going to keep it from being able to pivot like this. I've got these two pieces sitting together in the vise here. So I'm just going to weld them, a couple of tack welds, and then let it cool off for a little while. After you've done the welding, you're going to want to come back with a Dremel tool or some other little rotary tool of some kind and grind out the excess of the weld so it's more smooth inside. Now we have eight finger segments and each one has two rivet holes in it. So we're going to need 16 rivets and these rivets are being made out of roofing nails. What I'm going to do is just put them in this wire cutting tool, find a hole that works, and cut them down a lot shorter. Um, I'm pushing them all the way down, so it's just basically the thickness of the cutter that I have left. I'll get a measurement for you of that in just a moment. So, that long. I mean, you can do it in a test to see how long it needs to be. It's not like you're losing anything if you have to throw away a couple nails, but basically it just has to go through the layer of leather and through the layer of steel and have a little bit poking out on the other side so that you can hammer it down flat which you'll see what I'm doing in a second. But the measurement, the measurement for how long this actually is, is about 
it looks like we're at 3 sixteenths of an inch. Got all these cut, so now we're going to be begin the final assembly of the finger, the first finger. So take the first segment for the end of the finger, just put this leather up inside of it like that. Um, you don't necessarily want to go right to the end of the leather, you can leave a little bit of sort of slack sticking out the front. You don't need very much slack, but just some. So have it lined up like this, just the segment on the end of that finger leather strap. And we're going to put a mark where each of these holes is. And into those marks, we're now going to take one more sharp nail, just hammer it through each of these marks. So this is how you punch the holes. And then with the nail still stuck in the wood, lift up on the leather, and just kind of drag it up and down on the ridges of the nail a couple times. And then you can just pull the nail out, move on to punching the next hole. And you can line it up with the same hole in the wood if you want, or don't bother, either way. Again, make sure the leather is able to move up and down on that nail freely. Now, take two rivets and put them through each of the holes. It can be a little bit hard to find the hole at first, but once you get it, just push the nail through so it's sticking out like that. Okay. Now, we're going to push these two rivets through the holes in the steel of the finger segment. I'll try to keep my fingers out of your view as much as possible, but I do have to have my hands right in here in order to actually do this. Both of the rivets sticking through. You need to find a place on your anvil or, you know, vise or whatever you can use as an anvil where you can rest the underside head of the nail and hammer this on here. Make sure the back of the nail is resting against something solid. With the regular hammer, just hammer this on. Here's a better close-up view of the riveting process. I'm doing this on the second finger segment because it was really hard to show on the first finger segment. But So you've got the, uh, the back of the nail, the head, resting on a hard, flat steel surface. Without smashing your thumb, <laughs> just take a nice flat face hammer, start, start pounding it. You can see it quickly begins to flatten out and it locks in place. And once it starts getting a lot more flat, you can come in and kind of hammer at angles around the edges to get the edges all the way flattened down. But for these finger segments, you want it to be really flat so that they fit together nicely. So there you go. Nice rip it. it goes from that to that. You can see that we have that riveted on now and you want to hammer the rivets pretty much all the way flat. It's okay if there's a little bit of a bump but in order for the other pieces to sit nicely on it you want it pretty close to flat and if you need to you can grind them off and hit them with a wire wheel but you need to leave some don't grind it all off obviously it's the mushroomed out top of there that's holding this together so once you've got the first one on, just repeat with the second one. And how you know where to position it is just go back to where the wings, the wing parts of it, are just going to be enough to overlap just a tiny bit. Let's see if we can get a good view. You don't need much of an overlap, but you know, as long as they're just kind of a little bit overlapped, something like that maybe, even like that. So. 
Use your eyeball to position it correctly. And then repeat the process. Mark the holes and rivet it in place. After each finger segment that you add, just check that it's able to move, and then take your pliers and grip the side fin, and pushing it against the edge of a table, just bend it down like that. Um, you'll have to do a, a couple bends to get the angle right, probably, or you might just get it really easy. So bend that down. If it's a double-sided fin, of course, bend the other side also. Okay. So now you've got both sides bent down, and you can see that now they kind of drag on each other a bit. That means that I bent it in too far. So what you can do here is either pinch the front one, which is what I'm going to do with this case, or you can you can either bend the back one out a bit, or you can just take it and twist it like this so that the front comes out but the back goes in a little. You can see by pinching the front one a little narrower, they now move nicely against each other. So there's the finger. It's looking alright so far. Everything is lining up. You can see all the rivets on the bottom. Once you have all of this done, with them just riveted on there, there's only one last step to complete the first finger, which is to come with a grinder and just grind the extra off the bottoms there so that you get like a flat bottom instead of a jagged sawtooth type. There it is. Once you've ground those edges and then smooth them off with a wire wheel so they're not sharp, um, you have your first finger completed. So pretty soon you can make all the rest of the fingers and then in part two of this video series I will show you how to make all the rest of the hand pieces and maybe the wrist pieces. The wrist pieces might be part three.